So here I'm going to talk about one of the most important graphs in principles of microeconomics class. Um, and sometimes it's a little bit difficult uh, for students to, to grasp, so I kind of go over this marginal revenue curve. Um, but basically, we can show where monopolies choose price and quantity for their product, show that they uh, can actually make profit at the expense of the consumer, and we can actually compare producers and uh, consumers' welfare on a single graph. Okay? And, and you can use it to compare competition versus limited competition and, and, and see where the benefits come from increased competition. Right? So to begin, I'm going to show a simple demand curve. It starts with intercept of 9, the price of 9, quantity is 0 and on the vertical axis. And on the horizontal axis, it also has an intercept of 9. Slope is negative 1. I keep it simple so it can fit on a blackboard. But it go, every time price goes down 1, quantity goes up 1. So it's a typical downward sloping demand curve. Now, the quantity crosses 0 at 9. Our price of 0 is, is quantity of 9. And we'll see that marginal revenue will cross at 4.5, because marginal revenue crosses exactly halfway uh, in distance to where the demand curve slopes down. Right? So th that's my simple demand curve. And we can use it to calculate revenue, which is price times quantity, and marginal revenue, which is the difference. As you go up one in quantity, you can see revenue changes. Okay, So go, uh, revenue is P times Q, so 8 times 1 is 8, and 7 times 2 is 14, and so forth, all the way down here, where 1 times 8 is 8, and then 0 times 9 is 0. And you can see that it rises, and then it falls again here, and peaks right between 4 and 5, um, which is important, because that's where marginal revenue is going to equal 0. Now, it says 0 right here at, f at 4, but it's actually crossing zero in between right and so marginal revenue is 8 minus 0 or 8 and then 14 minus 8 is 6 and so forth you keep subtracting 20 minus 20 is 0 then it starts to go negative okay so while demand curve is still positive marginal revenue has become negative All right graphing them you can see here here's the slope of negative 1 going from 9 to 9 and here's marginal revenue that crosses right around 4.5 at 0 here and then it's because it's falling faster and that's a really important economic concept the monopoly is the only firm in the industry. They are the demand curve. There's the demand for their product is demand for the entire industry. And so as they produce more, they're pushing the price down. Uh, basically, they're competing with themselves. And so they're increasing quantity, but they're lowering their price. And so they're facing those two, two competing forces. And so at some point, they want to quit while they're ahead and stop producing before the costs exceed the benefits. Okay, So we're, we're going to introduce this marginal cost, and we're going to see where that point is. Okay, So adding marginal cost of 4 gives us an opportunity to see the profit maximizing point for that monopolist. Okay, Now, costs, a lot of times I say, are rising. That is possible. This is a simpler version where they're constant marginal costs. We can make the point a little bit easier just leaving this flat. Right? And so if you see here, revenue is the benefit, and cost is obviously the cost. And so at this point here, costs equal benefits. Over here, costs exceed benefits, so the firm does not want to produce more if it's going to hurt them. It's pulling their profit down. And here, they're doing too little of a good thing, right? Benefits are higher than costs, so they're going to want to produce exactly where costs and benefits are equal, okay? And that's going to be uh, the rule, price is above MR equals MC. So if you look at MR equals MC, marginal revenue equals marginal cost, they're both 4 at this point. The quantity is going to be 3, and you can draw that point here. All right now, one important thing is something students do a lot is they say, well, they're going to charge four in this case. They're going to charge the price here. That's actually not the case. Monopolists like what they're going to do is they're actually going to sell to what the, they're going to sell at the price that the market will bear. They're going to find the customers, those who want the product the most. They restrict the quantity, and they can charge a higher price to these people up here who really want the product. And that's kind of the point. They like to make a profit, and they can make more of a profit by restricting the quantity and raising the price. So the price is going to be up here at 6. And you can find that on the demand curve. So they don't charge 4. They raise the price to a higher point, which is found on the demand curve. They find where demand for the product fits 6. Okay, And so that's the monopolist's price. MR equals MC, because past that point, their costs are going to exceed the benefits. At that point, they choose the quantity, and then they find that they can sell it for a higher price. Right now, we can use this graph to use uh, compare it against uh, competitive pricing. Now, if you know the uh, perfect competition model, you know that it's a little bit different. Price is flat; it's a per it's infinitely elastic or perfectly elastic here uh, for demand for the product. And then there's the cost curves and such. So this is not that graph. This is just putting the competitive price rule, P equals MC, onto this graph. The way I look at it is if maybe the government were to come along and say, you can't be a monopolist, we're going to regulate you, you must charge the competitive price for the good of the consumers. So we're just going to pretend that they're going to act like a competitive firm. 
So I put this in green. Now P equals MC. So here P is 4 and MC is 4 at this point here. And you can see that the quantity that goes with it is 5. Okay, so this is the competitive pricing rule, and this is the competitive quantity, and obviously they're going to charge four dollars because uh, and they're gonna, they, they're not going to charge any different price than what's given. All right, so that's the competitive pr uh, rule. Now putting them together, we have green is competition and red is monopoly, and we can look at the results together. First of all, uh, under perfect competition, consumers get a higher quantity and they get a lower price. So that's unambiguously good for consumers, right? We like lower prices, we like higher quantities, we like more of things we like, and so that can show you how competition can actually increase well-being in that sense, okay? Now we can also calculate a little bit like perf uh, perfect competition's con uh, consumer surplus. Monopoly is going to have consumer surplus, uh, have a little bit of profit and dead weight loss. We're going to assume that this is kind of like the supply curve. Okay, we can just calculate it that way. So in a perfect competition, there's no dead weight loss. Um, there is profit and stuff, but it, it's we're going to use that as sort of the, the benchmark or the baseline. So we're just going to look at consumer surplus here. Now, if we know, know half base times height, it's half of 5, right? Well, 9 and 4 is 5. And then here, th this is from 0 to 5, so the, the base is going to be 5. Half of that is 12.5. So this triangle has an area of $12.5. Okay, under monopoly, this is going to be cut up between uh, consumers and producers, but there's going to be this deadweight loss here. So consumer surplus is only here. It's from nine to three. The height is three, base is three, and cut that in half. That's half of nine or four point five. Extra producer surplus. This is the profit that they're getting from raising the price on this limited quantity. That has it's got a height of two and a base of three, so this area is six. All right, and then this deadweight loss, which again, in the monopolist is cutting quantity, so it's hurting consumers who would like to buy the product. Remember, they're not getting what they want, um, and so because of this lost benefit, we can measure this as half of two times two. Right, the, the base is two, five minus three. Height is six minus four, two. Uh, half of, of four is two. So this area has a deadweight loss of two. And we can check our work, add them up. It's, this cutting up the triangle still gives you the same sum. So that's twelve point five. So that's kind of the result. All right, is that competition will increase welfare. Right, it monopoly transfers welfare from the consumer to the producer, but it actually uh, hurts total welfare by creating this deadweight loss. So we can use this graph to kind of talk about the relationship between uh, the competition and a lack of competition. Right, but overall. We were able to calculate uh, revenue and marginal revenue, show the marginal revenue pricing decision, and then compare it to the perfect competition pricing decision.